so Antifa groups, it is both an idea that anybody can pick up and actual activists. So there's people who basically do this work full time and they're Antifa activists. And then there are also people who usually are some other kind of radical activists, but when they go to a demo, they'll say, you know, they'll join in on the actions, right? So it's sort of both at the mm. same time. There's no structure. It's, although people do talk about, there's always been groups that are opposed to fascists. So they started when fascism started in the twenties in Italy, there were already groups fighting fascists. Um, people talk about Germany in the thirties because the two flag logo is taken from a communist group called anti-fascist action or something from the thirties, but that's all. There's no other connection to it. People just took the logo and, and the name. Um, the real origin is in, of the, the U.S. groups are in the 80s in, um, Britain when people were fighting the, uh, National Front and the emerging Nazi skinhead movement who were very aggressive and they were trying to shut down these National Front marches. That was the fascist party in Britain. Um, that was, their strong plank was an anti-immigration plank that eventually was picked up by a Thatcher's conservative government. Um, and there were fights with the Nazi skinheads. And so people had to be, you know, the Nazi skinheads are a murderous bunch and people had to be very aggressive. And the fascist movement is very aggressive and very dangerous, not even if it takes power, just as a movement. And so people have to respond in kind to it because um, people go and attack people of color. People go and attack leftists. People go and attack queer people. People go and attack Jews. People go and attack Muslims. And it's all nice and good for like wealthy liberal uh, op-ed writers to um, who live in fancy townhouses to wash their hands of the reality of being on the receiving side of this movement. But that's not what it looks like when you are sharing the same space with these people. You know, I come out of the 80s and 90s punk scene. You'd go to shows and they would be right there and they would attack people at the shows or outside of the shows or on the street. And you had to defend yourself or they would drive you out and they would drive everybody out who was a minority and drive everyone out who was their opposition. I mean, they would drive white, cisgendered white guys out too if they didn't like Nazis. Like, Nazis hate everyone and they're very aggressive. So there had to be a very aggressive response. So there was a structured group there called Anti-Fascist Action and they influenced the U.S. groups that sort of started in the 80s. Uh, first, there started to be anti-racist skinhead crews that almost by necessity emerged to combat the Nazi skinhead crews. The early one came out of the Twin Cities called the Baldies in the 80s. And they ended up combining with other groups over the years. And a group called Anti-Racist Action developed in the early 90s, in the early mid-90s in the U.S., um, at ARA. And that's the real predecessor to the um, Antifa groups today. They peaked out in about 96 uh, with about 200 groups, mostly in the U.S., some in Canada, and a couple in Latin America. They were... Um, um, they agreed they would use militant tactics against Nazis and other fascist and white nationalist organizers. So this was both defending people in the punk scene as well as organizing demonstrations against Klan and Nazi. Um, but, you know, 95 percent of Antifa work uh, is is non it doesn't involve direct confrontations. A lot of it. There's educational stuff. There's community organizing. There's organizing state demonstrations. A lot of time is spent tracking these groups, figuring out who their organizers are, figuring out what techniques they're using and, you know, doxing people in the nineties, there were um, early forms of doxing and people would do house demonstrations outside of um, Nazi organizers houses, you know, leaflet the neighborhoods, the direct mail campaigns to people who live, you know, in the blocks around them. All this stuff is non-confrontational, completely legal stuff. And it comprises the majority of what anti for work is. So, ARA continued the not the big mm. last big wave of Nazi and white nationalist organizing was from the mid eight early mid eighties to about ninety five was when it broke and um so the Antifa stuff always of course mirrors the Nazi organizing so as the far right movement goes down Antifa stuff it it it's usually peaks at least the last time it peaks a little later and then goes down so in the O's there were still Antifa groups in the U S um, anti racist action. Uh, existed until I think 2013. It became a network, a, a formal network, although there were other groups that were not in network. Um, and um, yeah, there'd be a big demonstration every two or three years. Like in 2006, there was a big, there was rioting in Toledo when the NSM, the National Socialist Movement, held a march. They were one of the groups in Charlottesville, by the way. They're the big neo Nazi party in the US. So every two or three years, there would be some big conflagration. And then there was still, you know, Nazi skinheads are still around. A lot of stuff came out of um, people trying to new forms of, of 
the fascist parts of the fascist movement had reset itself on an aesthetic and cultural level and was particularly trying to reach out to um, primitivist and anti-civ people and anarchists, people in the anti-globalization movement, animal rights activists and radical ecologists and anti-Zionists. Groups like National Anarchist Forum, um, as well as other groups coming out of an untrinal part of the fascist movement called Third Positionism. So there was a lot of cross-recruiting going on. So some of the Antifa groups became interested in how this new form of fascist stuff was evolving and why these people were recruiting directly from the scene. So there was, again, this sense of uh, contested terrain in the same place. Um, I was uh, just on some um, primitivist Facebook group where this white, this crypto fascist was trying to post stuff and I had to go talk to the mods and be like, yo, this dude does not care about these ideas. He's just here to recruit people for anti-Semitism and white separatism. And to their credit, they, they threw him off because um, sometimes people don't react so strongly. 